maybe let's start. Um, so welcome to the European Film Factory Masterclass on the Young European School for Action Animated Short Film Program with Adela Kaczmarek, director of Magda, and Simone Giampaolo, director of Only a Child. As a reminder, European Film Factory enables teachers, mediators, and students aged 11 to uh, 25 from member states of the Creative Europe pro Programme to access a catalog of European films accompanied by educational resources. The initiative was developed by Institut Francais in collaboration with Art Education and European School Net, supported by the media strand within uh, Creative Europe. So I would like to acknowledge the presence of the students who are the main, main participants today. Uh, the class from the Collegio Nazionale Costace Negruzzi in Niash and the Cine Club from the Collegio Grigore Moisil, both like in Niash in Romania. I would also like to thank the school Istituto di Istruzione Superiore Carlo Arbe Alberto Dalla Chiesa in Sesto Calende Varese in Italy. Uh, for providing us a project on Young Europeans Call for Action that we will present later. Before we begin with the questions from the students, I'd like to invite Adela and Simone to introduce their films. So Adela, please take the floor. Uh, hello, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Adela Kaczmarek. Mm, I was studying animation in quite famous uh, animation film studio in Academy of Fine Arts. And maybe you know the professor was Jerzy Kucia, and his film animation films are quite known. And I made my diploma film in 2008. It was called The Bay. Uh, later, I made the second film, The Full Sun. And then the third film was actually animation documentary film. Uh, it was called The Governance of Love. Uh, and then I made some medium length film. It was like 50 minutes long. And it was a documentary called Janka with some part uh, of animation. It was like 15 minutes animation and also some archives. Uh, 60 millimeters archives uh, and it was about a humanitarian activist in Poland and it occurred that when I finished this film it, I made it for seven years and the protagonist from this film actually knew Magda like in real life and uh, my previous protagonist Janka knew Magda as she was like 80 years old. So when I first heard about this project about Magda, um, it was interesting for me that this, this film, like uh, protagonists are connected. Um, and I think we'll talk about the film later. So maybe that's all from me for now. Okay, thank you, Adela. Uh, maybe Simone wants to share something about his work and films. Hello, Buna Ziwa. Uh, my name is Simone Giampaolo. I'm originally from the Italian side of Switzerland, and I've been working as a director of animated films in London for the past 10 years. So I now live in the UK. Um, I've been working on a big amount of different projects over the years, from uh, commercials to short films uh, uh, and TV series. I've just finished a TV series for Netflix a few weeks ago. And uh, Only a Child was a special project for me, it was a personal independent film born by my own idea. So I'm usually used to work with clients uh, commissioned films, uh, stuff for streamers or broadcaster or TV channels. Only a Child was different and special to me because it was a personal idea which was born to life um, with a bunch of very, very uh, talented artists uh, based in Europe and especially in Switzerland, where I'm from. Only a Child, you, you probably have watched it before. 
it's a I define it a poem, a visual poem, which uh, gives words and color and shape to uh, one of the most powerful environmental speeches ever given in the history of humankind, uh, which is the speech given by Severn Kali Suzuki at the United Nations Summit in Rio de Janeiro in 1992, so more than 30 years ago. Um, I hope you enjoyed the film, yeah, and I'm looking forward to your questions. And uh, if I'm not wrong, Simone, you have a video you want to show with us, like you want to share with us a video, right? Yes. A special yeah, message, right? That's correct. That's correct. Um, so basically, just to give a bit of context, um, I got in touch with Severn Kali Suzuki herself at the beginning of the project, but we never seen her during the production. We only saw her once in Geneva, very briefly, because she was traveling for work. But we never had a chance really to show her uh, the behind the scenes and the progression of the project. So many months after getting in touch with her and proposing this idea to her, we showed her the final film. And she was really moved and really touched. She loved it. And she sent us this video to thank us, to thank me and the rest of the team for this uh, project to bring her words to life again, so many years after the summit uh, in Rio de Janeiro. So I'm going to show you now a, a section, uh, a part of that thank you message that she sent over. Um, so sharing a video yeah just one second finding it okay hello everyone is it working yes can you hear the sound? Yeah, we can hear. Yeah. Okay, okay. okay. I'll play it now. Hello, everyone. My name is Severin Kalis Suzuki. I am honored to be speaking to you. I'm speaking to you from here, Haida Gwaii, the home of the Haida Nation for the past 14,000 years. I wanted to thank you all personally because this has been an incredible privilege to be part of such an epic artistic collaboration. I have loved animation all my life, from watching cartoons as a child to learning stop animation when I was young from my aunt, artist Aiko Suzuki, to seeing the power of animation as a communication tool to support my environmental messages, to today when I'm showing my own kids modern stop animation. So to be able to be part of this project of creation and watch its development, which was built on, is built on one of the most important events in my life, the speech that I gave at, Rio Earth, at the Rio Earth Summit when I was 12. This has been truly amazing. I wanted to talk to you a moment about the Rio speech. We are almost 30 years on and it's become an iconic piece of piece of of art in itself it's persisted for 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 so much time it's continually brought up in rounds of awareness that the world is coming into around intergenerational justice justice for our future generations and it's having a moment again right now with the school strikes for climate and the incredible Greta Thunberg's movement over the years, several artists have come up with ways to use the speech in various ways. Um, heavy metal bands in particular love the Rio speech, uh, children's authors, painters, but this is the most epic incarnation we have seen. And to create such a collaboration of so many incredible artists is an achievement full of beauty and brilliance in itself. It is through creative collaboration that we are going to transition our global economy off of fossil fuels. It is through creative collaboration that we are going to find a way out of our ecological and existential crisis that we face today. It is the way. 
Now, the thank yous. I am so glad that before the world shut down with COVID-19, I was able to meet the director and the producers of this film. It was a great experience for me and I felt friendship right away as we visited together in Geneva in July of last year. I want to thank Director Simone. Your vision was crazy <laughs> and it was incredible and it's been absolutely beautiful to see it come to fruition, to come to life in such a powerful way. Congratulations. To the producers, Gabriella, Ursula, Silvana and Tiziana, rest in peace, who supported Simone's vision from the beginning, thank you. Thank you to Amka Films for producing this film and supporting this vision. And now the artists, the core of this film. I want to thank the artists, the incredible talent that has truly given a new life to the Rio speech and become a new presentation of this nearly three decades old message. Rather than mispronouncing your beautiful last names, I'm going to stick to first names. So here we go. I want to thank Monica and Julian, Marjolaine, Andrea, Emilian, Barbara, Nino, Patrick and Roman with your epic rhino drops and shatter. Ermgard, Oswald, Philip with the very scary greedy man eating the tiny child. It was so intense. Stefan and Emilian, Michael, Eve and Claudia with the grenade transforming into a peace bird. It was so beautiful. Justine, Nina, Cyril, Veronica, Joel and Manuela. Cesar with the sand art and changing light. It's so incredible. Thanks to colorist Andy and to musician Flavio. It truly brought this work into to, to life and to completion. Thank you. And from my side, I want to thank Susan Johnston, my executive assistant, who's been a great partner in crime on this project. So thank you. Thank you so much for your heart, for your commitment, and especially for your talent. Thank you for doing this work, for creating a message for intergenerational justice for future generations. I'm so honored to be part of this project and I'm so excited to see where it will go. And I am certain that 30 years from now, this film will still be making the rounds and it will still be inspiring us all to make our actions reflect our words. Thank you. Thank you, Simona, for sharing this video. Very inspiring video with us, this very inspiring message with us. Uh, thank you to Adele as well for the presentation. And I guess we can start with the question uh, probably we can start with um uh, the Collegio Grigore Morzil uh, class uh, cine club okay please tell me Chiara if you can hear us yeah i can hear you yeah so, hello once again hello hello <laughs> uh, we are glad to be part of this uh, master class and we enjoyed watching both of the movies. Um, we watched uh, the movies uh, last week and then even two days ago, I think, we watched again during one of our breaks uh, in school because we wanted to, to see other interesting uh, elements and asking the directors uh, about it. So I will let the kids speak. They, they had uh, some questions, they prepared some questions. I think they, they have to, to come here to be heard. Stefan? So we have, uh, we organized a bit the questions. Uh, first of all, uh, kids have questions for uh, only a child, I think. Hello. So the question I want to ask you is how valuable is the children's voice for yourself and the team around you in accordance with the harsh reality of our days and why? Um, hello, 
I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't catch the second part of the question. Could you could you repeat it? Okay, so how valuable is the children's voice for yourself and the team around you in accordance with the harsh reality of our days and why? Okay. Uh, how valuable is the voice of the of the children? So yes. That's what you mean. Yeah. <sighs> Um, you're you're referring to the children today, right? Not the voice of Severn thirty years ago. In the present day, I will. In the present day, the voice okay. of the teacher is louder every time. So I, I no, no, I, I I got it. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Okay. I I understand. Um, I think this film is only a piece of art which portrays a much bigger picture um this film only showcases what's been done on the streets what's been done during marches during protests during fridays for futures i'm, I'm sure you've done it as well uh in uh, in romania uh in the past years maybe some of you have participated so it's important it's 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 not important. It's it's fundamental that the voice of young kids, but also older people, are heard on the streets protesting, are heard by politicians. Um, and this film only basically is taking those voices, those messages, and putting them onto a wider audience on film on a film festival circuit or. Um, on television or on the internet, but it's, it's exactly the same thing. You know, what really matters is the value and the messages that young people are bringing to the table these days. And it's fundamental to listen to them, um, even though there, there are many other distractions, like there are many other things happening in the world, uh, some very bad things. We, we all know about them. You know, there are a few wars going on and so on, but but these protests for the environment are still one of the most Im important topics to be talked about in our time. And uh, it's it's fundamental for me and it's fundamental for the team that we keep listening to that uh, because the politicians that listened to Severn 30 years ago, they didn't act. They didn't do anything. Severn went to uh, Rio de Janeiro or the Earth Summit, Summit. She gave this beautiful speech. Everyone clapped. Like all the politicians were like, oh, good, good kid. Well done. But they didn't listen. They didn't do anything. And that's brought us to the situation we are in today with the climate crisis. So, yeah, I hope that answers your questions. It's it's fundamental to value uh, young people's uh, point of view. Yeah, it answers my question. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, I'm Daniel, and my question is: How has working on only a child uh, affected your future endeavors? Yeah, my future in the industry, in the yeah, yeah. Um, only a child has had a very big impact for me because uh, even though I, I I mentioned before, I mostly work on commercial projects or uh, TV series for kids. So it, the kind of content I do is usually quite different. But only a child had a very big impact, and I'm and I'm and I'm good success in uh, festivals and awards around the world. Um, it got a, a short list for the Oscars in the US. It got a BAFTA nomination in the UK. And people really value that, you know, especially production companies and producers. They really, if, if you have a BAFTA nomination, it's like it's a big deal. And the director is suddenly more valuable and, and more expert than before. So it, it it has helped me. I mean, I, 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 when I was doing the, it, I, I was not imagining it would have such a big success internationally, but it has helped me finding new collaboration, new artists, and new studios to work with. Uh, it's been, um, yeah, it's been a very positive since it came out. 
I thank you for your question. Uh, I thank you for your answer, and uh, it truly has answered my deepest stuff. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, hello. Uh, my name is Marco. First of all, I want to say that uh, it's really an honor to get to ask you uh, this question. Uh, and uh, my question is, how did you come up with the uh, sequence where uh, uh, you had a grenade and the perspective shifts and the grenade uh, transforms into the dub of peace? Um, thank you for, for, for your question. The, uh, that sequence, that that seg segment of the film is one of my favorites. And uh, it was also one of the most challenging segment of the whole film because it got changed three times. So I work with two artists, two stop motion artists, which directed that segment. And I told them, I really want to do something which feels like a puppet. It feels like a miniature toy of kids, uh, which turns from a hand grenade, like a toy hand grenade, it turns into a message of hopes. And uh, and they suggested a few ideas. At some point, there, we, there was even a, a scarabeus, like a scrabble, uh, instead of a dove, instead of a bird, the grenade was turning into an insect. And I that didn't make much sense. So the idea initially was that um, maybe you've seen it on the internet or in uh, exhibitions. Basically, there is an il installation piece of art which looks like something, and then the camera turns around, the camera rotates, and it reveals a different figure, a different image. So the idea was to show a grenade, turn around the camera, and it would morph because of the perspective into a dove, into a bird of hope. Uh, we didn't manage to do exactly that, so they they started changing and adding elements as the camera was turning around, and that's what, how it came out. I, I think it's brilliant. I think they did a great job, but it took a while to come up with that idea. Um, the idea is fairly simple, but the way it's done in stop motion, that's all stop motion. So, you know, one picture, then move, one picture, then move, one picture, all that in... Um, for that sequence was very intense. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you. We still have many questions, but we want to let also the the other school students, the Christina students, to to ask questions. So if we have time at the end, maybe we we came back with the questions for only child. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it okay like this, uh, Chiara? Uh, yeah. To ask yeah, of course, you can maybe uh, ask the questions to Adela now. Now? Okay. Now? Yeah, let's go to Adela okay. so that we can alternate. Okay, perfect. So would you like my students to, to ask Adela some questions? Because they are prepared either way. Okay, let's go with your students, Christina. So that and then we, we go back them. forth. Yeah, so that we can meet okay. them. Right. Okay, so... Uh, while they uh, they get ready, I'm um, just going to tell you that we also watched the two films yesterday. We had a, a workshop where we tried to look at some of the um, colors and all the suggestions there. There wasn't enough time, I would say, so that's why I'm happy they're here today. Uh, and of course, they have some, some questions. Uh, I think Sarah is the first one. Um, hello, my name is Sara, and it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, so the film act that had a significant impact on me. So I have the following question. Uh, what did you want to share through your vision? And what were uh, the reactions of those who watched the short film that impressed you the most? Um, um... A little bit opposite, like with Simone, with his pro project. Uh, this film was the first that it wasn't exactly my idea about the, telling this story, but uh, there was a, there is a producer, Anna Głowik from uh, Letko, the animation company from Warsaw, and they had an idea to make serious about a woman in war 
So there will be like, I think 10 parts and every part will uh, tell the story of different um, character from different country. Uh, so I've never heard about Magda before I uh, get this, the first draft of the scenario. Uh, but it had to be changed, so I read uh, her autobiography, the book she wrote when she was quite old, I think. Uh, and she fascinated me, especially the when you, if you remember the the end. In the end, there are some uh, few sentences about her life after this uh, ski. Um, adventure and it was amazing for me that she uh, started her life with this crazy almost like James Bond uh, adventure but later she didn't you know uh, calm down <laughs> and uh, her life was also later um, very intense and I think that it was made for young like for teenagers, for young people. So I'm glad that uh, that young people actually like the film. I wanted it to be like uh, colorful and uh, with this uh, fast um, editing and this music also. Uh, um, I think it's it's not boring, you know, in, in this time of people scrolling the rolls for like 10 seconds. Uh, I hope it can um, get the attention of young people. Thank, Thank you for the question. Okay, I think there should be someone else now. Uh, it's it's rather difficult for me to see everybody, so uh, maybe they could just open their uh, microphone. Elisa, uh, I think. Yeah, it's me. Uh, I wanted to ask: uh, Would you consider your movie educational or artistic? I think it's like uh, educational, more with element of entertainment than really. You know, I like the aesthetics, uh, but I it's less um, like like outer film, and it's less artistic than my previous film. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, had to be light in some way, and it it was uh, the idea was to make it like uh, easy and nice to watch. So. I don't know, maybe it could be more artistic, <laughs> but we also wanted to, you know, present facts and to make it entertaining. So, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I've also got a question for you, Adela. Uh, how does it feel to represent the Polish community in the cinematic world, taking into consideration your acclaimed contributions? Uh, Janka and Magda? Mm. <laughs> Difficult question. Uh, I haven't been with this film in some foreign uh, festival. I only was uh, in Poland. So I really don't have this feeling that, you know, I'm. Uh, that I don't know how many viewers did it have, uh, have not in Poland, but you know, in, in other countries. I hope that maybe when this whole uh, series will be finished, then we will also put it in some producer, uh, producers will put it in some, uh, I don't know, maybe Netflix or something and then I will have this feeling of really, you know, have a have, uh, big audience because for now I don't really 
it's it's strange feeling you know when i finished this film like two years ago and and i'm in completely different place now so mm -hmm. this meeting is a little bit uh reminding me <laughs> about this film and i'm very happy that uh, you could watch it yeah because you know like thanks to european film factory actually the film is available magda and the other films uh, from the program are available in 38 countries around europe and beyond so potentially the film is now seen by many many classes and students around europe mm -hmm. so i'm very happy for that so anna maria maybe you want to ask your questions to adele yeah. Of course, in the meantime, we discovered some technical goodies here, <laughs> so you can see better uh, who's asking. Matea. Uh, hi, I really liked your film. I appreciated it. And uh, what catch my eye was, uh, I, I think, were the transitions. And I really wanted to ask you, what was your inspo for those? I find them really eye-catching and interesting and creative. It's um, this is the, like the specific of animation film, like that you know you can edit this in the way that in uh, uh, films with actors it's impossible. So we were especially trying to um, in, in the beginning um, when you make animation, you make something called uh, animatic. And it's like sketch for the whole film. Uh, so we wanted the, to put there some this transformation scenes just to make it more interesting and surprising. And I think it's also a part of uh, entertainment. Um, yeah. So I don't really remember some particular uh, inspiration. It was like, just, you know, you have to use your imagination and just think about it. What could transform to another something? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So we have another question. Miruna. Uh, Hello. I'm Hi, I'm Miruna, and I wanted to ask you uh, what influenced your choice of animation style for this documentary, for this project? Uh, it's very different uh, from my previous films. Um, so it's the first time that I collaborated with uh, some other artists uh, who made uh, the characters design and also the landscapes so we wanted to we were a little bit inspiring inspired by <clears throat> some polish painters from i think like uh, 1920s so it was actually before the war but but short before and also the Tatra mountain style, like the, in the music, you can hear it. Uh, like we, we wanted to make it a little bit like folk style connected to, to Polish mountains. This is so cool. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks. We still have one question. I think. Okay. Hello, my name is Matei. Maybe this is a odd question, but I always wondered uh, did the things you learned in school help you become the filmmaker you are today? <laughs> <laughs> I like this question a lot. <laughs> hmm. Let me think. I think, you know, it's more like um, I think. I think like um, in my case, Polish lessons. So uh, like this humanistic uh, part, mostly Polish, <laughs> when, when you just have to learn books and 
study how to you know just discuss about books about ideas so yeah later you have to write for example when you apply to some film institute you have to write your ideas you have to write the uh, screenplay but also you have to write some like director's explication and uh, you know you have to be convinced convincing in a way telling that why you want to make this film why is it important so everything connected with writing uh, it was uh, it was uh, viable um, I think I could study English more, <laughs> so that's for sure um, also helpful. But you know, in school, I think you you just learn how to live and um, how to um, get to your goals. In some, you know, you have to pass the exams. You have to. Um, like many different things to pass to the next level. So, <laughs> and do you, you don't like school? <laughs> but uh, I think I'm in the wrong place. I don't really like informative. <laughs> and we are a computer science high school and Mati is one of the creative students. He likes arts and movies and acting. And probably uh, this question was, was for me too, because uh, I am <laughs> a teacher. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh, we wish you the best in art. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Christina. Yeah, thank you. Maybe Christina students can ask questions to Simone. Uh, yes, of course. We do have some students that are uh, actually to just uh, give you a glimpse of what we did yesterday. We watched um, Magda first and then only a child. So this is only uh, a continuation of that. Um, and I must confess that while Magda was a bit uh, more serious, I would say, they found only a child a bit more uh, challenging. So um, that's why I'm, I'm looking forward to the answers as well. From Anna first. Uh, yeah, for Simone, uh, you have worked with Netflix, Disney, Cartoon Network and other high profile companies. Uh, sometimes with the tendency of undermining social problems. Yet in your independent work, you approach more significant and important topics. Do you think that animation is more effective, is a, a more effective way of making people understand the problems we're facing in today's society? Hello, hi Anna. Uh, that's, a, that's a very good question, thank you. I do think animation is is truly is the perfect medium to reach as many people as many viewers as possible um and why why is that because animation has the power to be accessible and compelling uh both to accessible to both kids teenagers and adults it's something that live action um, sometimes struggles to do, especially when it talks about harsh topics like climate crisis, war, starvation, uh, discrimination, and so on. So animation has got, thanks to the stylization, thanks to stylizing things and designing them in a particular way, animation has the force and the power to reach different kind of audiences at the same time, uh, from young kids to adults. That's that's the reason why I I decided to to do animation and I keep doing animation because it, uh, it it's very flexible and it can adapt to many different kind of audience. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Zamfira, as my name is Plays. Um, I my question about your opinion because. I, from what we all know, is that wait, wait, because of the I think issues I, we are I, facing as a world, but many have already accepted their fate and change. 
I think we don't hear you, uh, Zamfira. I don't know if, Christina, do you know the question? Because I know that you prepared the question. Um, is it better now? Yes, maybe. Let's try. Okay. So my question is the following one. So a lot of people uh, know about the issues we are facing as a, a world, but many have already accepted their fate and see change as something impossible to achieve. And I was wondering, how do you think we could help them change their minds? Thank you. Oh, hello. Um, yeah, these are tough, uh, tough questions um, for a small filmmaker. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, uh, it involves a lot of politics. It involves making decision for a big chunk of population. It involves studying the trends and, and this um, psychology of humans. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's, it's a very large topic. It's true. Today, there is a lot of eco anxiety, uh, anxiety created by this doom factor, the fact that people are accepting that, are starting to accept that there is not much they can do. They start to panic, they start to see the future as not so bright and dark. And that's why you need messages which can shake the population. Like, I never intended to give a solution to making only a child. These solutions are there. Scientists have already placed solutions on the table, uh, solutions which have not been welcomed by most politicians yet. So I would say the intention of the film was not to give solutions. Uh, but it was to really shake the audience and give a slap in the face of the old generations which haven't really listened to these kind of messages. So um, to answer your question, um, I think messages, animated messages, film messages, filmmaking in particular, but also books, uh, uh, video games, uh, documentaries, you know, any kind of media uh, instrument that can allow you to shake the audience to make it make the audience think and even change the mind of the audience uh, all these tools are necessary today to make people realize uh, there is no time left and decision need, de decisions need to be made now uh, unfortunately as i said it's not the vast population of the planet Earth that needs to be convinced is just a, a little, a little percentage, maybe a one or two percent, which unfortunately make decisions for very vast amount of population. And these people need to be shaken, uh, need to be um, made, need to realize the threat that is behind the corner. Um, I think it's it, people should not should still have hope uh, and should still fight for what's you know in the future for uh, for having a brighter future in 10 20 30 years time I even asked Severn you know the fir the first time I met her I asked her Severn do you think there is hope like do you have hope as a as a mother of two kids, do you still have hope for the future? And she said that absolutely, there is, as long as there are creative collaborations, as long as people will communicate the issue and will try to spread what's good and what's just with their neighbors, uh, there will be hope. But this hope is is really hanging now. It's really hanging on a from a very thin string or thread and uh, there are only a few people who can sorry it is wrong to say there are only a few people who can change and everyone can change everyone can help make people change their mind but there are only a few people that can really 
put their foot down and take the decision. And we need to make sure those people know what decision to take, uh, if that makes sense. It's a, it's a very difficult question, but thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much as well. That was a really good answer. Thank you. Unfortunately, Zamfira had some uh, technical difficulties, but you must know that she's uh, always so inquisitive. So, <laughs> yeah. um, and there's one more question that I think is rather similar, but uh, that has a sort of a twist, let's say. Bianca, are you here? Uh, yes. Hello, my question is quite close to that uh, at one At one point in your short film on your child, you mentioned that the school students are told to be good to others, to help them and more, but these rules aren't respected. Uh, do you think that can change something to make others around us realize how important these values are? If so, what should we change? Or could young people do something? You you are talking about that uh, the segment uh, on the blackboard where it says where you see the students and you say you you teach at that school not to do this and do that and do that is that what you are talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Um. So this is all about being coherent uh, as adults and take our responsibilities as as grown ups like uh, we are in schools i i don't know i i think the school system is quite similar I, I grew up in the italian side of switzerland so our culture is very italian which i think is very similar to romania you know we we get our usual quite strict um education as kids it, we are told not to do that and not to do that and not to be uh not to speak at certain points and to be disciplined and to be silent and to study and you know we 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 are really told a lot of things and then we observe adults not respecting those things we observe adults not doing the things that kids are told to do and so there is there is a broken system there. Uh, kids are starting; they have started already to ask themselves why why should we listen to adults which are not respecting the the things that are we are told to respect? Why are the adults not doing that? An example is uh, science. We 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 learn a lot about science, computer science or science at school. I was really passionate about biology. And uh, and physics at school, uh, and uh, and we then we see so many adults, so many people in power, not to really listen to science, not to listen to scientists, not to hearing the warnings and the red flags and the al uh, alerts from scientists, and and you ask yourself, why am I even studying science, if uh, why am I told by adults to study science if they are not respecting it or they are not listening to it? You know, there is a big uh, contradiction there. And that's why I really wanted to insert that, that 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 part that you're talking about was not in the film initially. I cut it out because of budget constraints and time constraints. But then we really insisted to put it back in because I wanted students to empathize with the short. I wanted students to feel more as part of the message that Severn was given. You know, she was also a student at the um, middle school when she gave that 12 years old is like middle school when she gave that speech. So it's like be coherent, be fair and be just with your teachings. If you're teaching us to make certain things, you should be uh, you shouldn't be a hypocrite and you should uh, respect what you are teaching as well. You should be respectful of the things you're telling us to do. Thanks, I am, Sarah. I'm talking a lot here. I'm also sometimes not behaving right. And I'm also sometimes, you know, uh, maybe not 
behaving the right way or being a role model. I'm trying to be, but I'm, I'm uh, sometimes everyone makes mistakes, but at least it's important to, to listen, I think, to the science and respect our neighbors and nature. These are the two most important things. If we respected neighbors and nature, there would be no war and there would be no ecological problems e e either. Thank you, Simone. I don't know if, Cristina, you asked all the questions, maybe? I don't know. Yes? Uh, I think Ana Maria now has uh, a couple more. Yeah. Uh, does she? Yeah, I, I think there are also some kids who want to ask something. The same, actually. Matea, you had a question for only a child, too? Okay. Let's see. Hi, uh, I think your message is uh, really touching and I wanted to thank you for the film. And But uh, on a more uh, technical side, I wanted to ask you about the animations and why and how did you choose so many styles for it? Hello. Uh, th there is a good uh, reason for that. And I, I was clear with the producer since day one, I wanted to include as many techniques as possible. Uh, the reason for that is I see every animation style as a country or a tribe or a nation. You know, imagine there is the tribe of 2D animators, the nerdy crew of the CG animators and the stop motion guys, like there are different tribes. And I wanted only a child to look like um, different people from different nations, from different tribes coming together and to give a common message. So it was very important to have as many techniques as possible to see different backgrounds of different cultures coming together. So we tried, uh, uh, we had almost, uh, we had more than 10 different techniques which is very difficult to do in an animated shorts because it involves lots of uh, uh, calculating different budgets and pipelines and make sure that the process works for every technique. But we managed to collect uh, so many techniques, uh, sand animation, um, CGI, uh, computer animation, 2D animation, uh, stop motion, uh, puppet animation, animation with objects as well paint on glass, uh, like painting every frame on a, on a piece of glass, like as many as we managed. Uh, and the reason was to make the short as universal and diverse as possible. Thank you. That's really interesting. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um... Now, actually, thank you, because we got a similar question from the uh, participants, the observers. So it answered also uh, some questions we get uh, we got in the Q&A chat box. I don't know if there are other questions from the participants. Uh, they, you, I remind you that you can ask questions in the Q&A uh, chat box as well for the observers. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the question actually came from the school in Italy, uh, like students who prepared a presentation. And they, uh, so it is the Instituto uh, di Istruzione Superiore Carlo Alberto Dalla Chiesa in Sesto Calendo in Varese. Uh, they are listening to us today. And um, actually, they sent us a um, suggestion, a book suggestion, uh, some kind of, uh, yeah, uh, a book combining uh, the, the two films somehow, Magda and Only a Child. The title is Sciare in un mondo fragile, Skiing in a Fragile World. Uh, it's a book from two, 2021 by Marco Emanuele Tosi and Michele Comi. And uh, this is a nice book because actually uh, it tells the story of um, four friends who decided to travel to Davos for the World Economic Forum, which is somehow like the people who 
to mention what Simone said earlier, put their foot down. They have the ability to put their foot down, but they don't usually. And uh, they wanted that for uh, friends that wanted to join the activists for of uh, Fridays for Future and the international environmental protest movement inspired by Greta, Greta Thunberg's climate strikes. So Luca, Giovanni, Marco and Michele chose to travel by train from Busta Stizio and reach the Swiss city, Davos, with skis. So there are the skis uh, we have uh, seen in Magda and of course the protest and uh, the action we have uh, seen in Only a Child. So I want to thank this class in Italy who suggested us to read this book. Unfortunately, I think the, the, the film is only in Italian, the, 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 sorry, the book is only in Italian. But uh, yeah, Sciare in un mondo fragile from, uh, by Marco Emanuele Tosi and uh, Michele Comi. Uh, I don't know if there are other questions from participants or from the two classes, Romanian classes, because I have one more question maybe for um, Adela. Are you still with us? <laughs> yeah. Um, because uh, what I... Well, I actually we found quite interesting in the film. Um, we can consider it uh, an anidoc because it is like animation, of course, but also documentary film. So um, we have a question about the challenges uh, of portraying uh, Magda's uh, perspective and the surrounding historical events, working with archives, because you worked with archives. You weren't there when the, when the interview uh, took place. So what are the main challenges uh, about working with archives? Uh, unfortunately, uh, Magda was already uh, that when I started to make this project, but there was this long, long video um, in some uh, museum uh, in Warsaw. So I just had this video, video uh, it was like, I think four hours. So I had to watch it and, you know, cut only these things that are uh, interesting for the short film. But the funny thing was that she was um, speaking in a very um, original manner. And it was on, on the one hand, it was very authentic and uh, full of life, although he, she was all more than 80 years old. But unfortunately, she had this strange accent and it was annoying. And that's why we had to um, record an actress. And uh, we found uh, uh, an old act actress uh, and she just read the exact uh, sentences of, um, of real Magda because uh, Magda's accent was too annoying. <laughs> I, I can't describe it, but it was like she was she put her accent in the last uh, last word of every sentence and it's it was <laughs> very strange and it's um, it really um, it couldn't be used so we had to put it um, again and uh, actually i i feel very well in the commentary film and i like to meet protagonists and my next film is also documentary. So I like to li listen uh, um, to people. So it's actually, I prefer to work with the really real person than with, you know, uh, someone who is only painted. <laughs> And this is what uh, the two films uh, have in common, you know, only a child at Magda, because they are giving voice, actually, they are the voice of existing people who could change uh, something in their own uh, small world. So, and maybe in the bigger, bigger, bigger picture. Uh, 
as well. Yeah, for Only a Child, we use the actual original sound, but the only place where we could find the video was YouTube. So we, we downloaded the video from YouTube and uh, I asked um, a professional sound designer to, to do a restoration. So he they improved uh, the sound quality of the YouTube clip, which was really bad. So yeah, but but that's her voice. That's her actual voice from 1992. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, actually the program, because you know the uh, Young Europeans Call for Action program, as uh, six films, uh, and some of them are uh, documentary, like the two films, Only a Child and uh, Magda, uh, are not the only documentary and any doc in the program. There is also Saigon Sur Marne. So we, we, we see that animation combined uh, with documentary can be quite uh, powerful. And uh, we really thank your work, uh, Simone and Adela, uh, because it was very inspiring for us. I hope it was inspiring for the students as well, the Romanian students and also students around Europe who assisted to the masterclass, uh, which is uh, recorded. So you will be able to um, uh, catch up uh and uh, uh view again uh the masterclass if you want to uh i don't know if there are other questions from you i i have one curiosity uh is a question for adela um if i well understood there is a series of um, um animations about women in war did I correctly understood the, the information? And if it is so, um, where we could see probably those animations? It's not finished yet. Uh, oh. It's like, you know, I've, I'm sure that there is one part from Belgium, Belgium uh, about some uh, um, woman who uh, she was chemist, uh, but the whole series is not finished, so you have to wait a little bit more. <laughs> you. And uh, if I understood correctly, it is from the production company Lecto, right? Letco. Yeah, Letco. Letco. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The production company, Magda's production company. Yeah, but it's some uh, co-production. So I think there's also some other company that I don't remember the name. Okay. So thank you a lot. I don't know if you have other questions. Uh, if not, I really, really, really uh, want to uh, thank, of course, uh, the two classes, the Cine Club, from the Collegio Grigore Moisil and uh, class from the Collegio National Costache Negruzzi uh, and uh, Anna Maria Given and uh, Cristina Mocanu, uh, the two teachers. And of course, uh, Simone Giampaolo and uh, Adela Katmarek um, and all the students uh, who listen to us and join us, uh, the participants uh, who listened to your beautiful answer and, of course, questions as well. Uh, this is the last class of European Film Factory. We were very happy to have you all. Uh, of course, uh, we wish you happy holiday season as well. And, uh, of course, uh, don't forget to... Uh, watch European Film Factory films. Uh, European Film Factory is still going on in 2024. So don't miss the op opportunity to discover new films uh, in our catalog and all the pedagogical, ped pedagogical resources. Thank, thank you very much. No, thank to you. And uh, maybe see you next time. <laughs> yeah, thank you for the wonderful questions, by the way. Uh, yeah, I hope uh, I hope uh, the answer were interesting, and uh, I hope you will also make your own films in the future if you if you decide to become filmmakers or animators. Uh, yeah, it would be lovely to see your work at some point. <laughs>